Hello whiskey lovers from around the world. It's been a while, but uh, I'm back again, and this time with my good friend, Krish Kumar. And today we're talking about Indian whiskey. Krish, hello. Nice to have you. Nice to be here. Nice to be here, Jock. Uh, Good uh, to see you. And folks from the whiskey-loving community of the world, look at what we've got us in its bottles. Is we have uh, four whiskies from India, and um, I'm going to start with one called Brilliance. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice, Jock. And I have got something called edited here. Okay. Um, but let's do the, the brilliance first. We've got, yeah, we've go got for a it. whole bunch of glasses. Go for it. And uh, we'll go for the brilliance first and then yeah. edit it. And then my personal favourite. Uh, folks, Krish and I do uh, have different tastes. Uh, this is the brilliance. I'll take it up to the camera so that you can see it. And um, then we'll talk a little of it and about whiskey in India in general and other such things. I'll go up to the camera so that you can see it folks. Uh, is that visible cameraman? Yeah, can you see the word brilliance on it? This is the this is the standard bottling. There are two standard bottlings and a whole bunch of other stuff. But we'll talk about this standard bottling called brilliance now. I'll put it up in the front. Now, when I put it into the glass, Krish, first of all, tell us who you are. I, um, my name's Krish, as you know, and uh, I sell Paul John for a living. I uh, go around Europe and uh, UK and just uh, spread the joy and spread love and also uh, talk about Indian whiskey here and there. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's always good to uh, sit with you and uh, discuss whiskey, as, as usual. Yeah. Um, how about this Indian whiskey malarkey? People are uh, people are uh, are saying you know whiskey it has to be Scotch or Irish at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean India? Why? <laughs> Tell me about India. Well, uh, I get I get asked this uh, question several times in, uh, in every single show and people I speak to even my friends and well. Whiskey in India, it's, it was introduced uh, in, during the British Raj in the 19th century. Um, in the late 1820s, I suppose, going back to the 1820s, the first um, a, a guy called Edward Dyer, he, he started a brewery in uh, Kasoli, North India. Okay. And that brewery then turned into a distillery. Uh, now, I, I think they're making rum now, so... Whiskey is it's, it's never been that famous, but then yet yeah, we produce a lot of whiskey. One one interesting fact about whiskey in India is that in in two thousand and ten, nearly half of the global whiskey market was the Indian whiskey. <laughs> Amazing! Yeah, yeah. Here we are, folks, from Scotland, and. Uh, I've got this this lovely Indian chap. Good, for, we've become fine friends, <laughs> by the way. And um, uh, it just blew my mind. This whiskey blew my mind away. Brilliance, the one that I'm, I've poured in first, is of the two standard bottlings from India. They've got. You should look out for them at the shows, folk, at the whiskey shows and and events. Uh, the um, Paul John uh, whiskey is really something to look out for. They've got some really cool things to look at. I know geeky people, anoraki people don't care about looking at stuff. They want to taste something nice. That's good. I want to talk about something about how it looks first. You know, the, uh, the, the marketing, it's all quite cool. They've got really nice little booklets that go along with it. They've got a, a little elephant in a, as a table. Yeah. And <laughs> Jenny Jenny, Jenny, my, my yeah. favourite elephant in the world, and uh, the the whiskey brilliance is forty six percent. It's got no colouring added. Uh, it's got uh, it's not been chill filtered, and um, at our favourite strength of uh, of bottling strength of your mass producing, forty six percent. 
It's no artificial colour, no artificial flavours, um, non chill filtered, absolutely pure and honest yeah. whiskey. As uh, as it should be. Of course. And um, the taste of this whiskey, it's is it's like a honeycomb. It's uh, it's got the, it's got smells to it which are which really really appeal to me. Because uh, I'm not such a great peat freak. Uh, that might be uh, like cursing in a church to some of you peat heads, but peat's all right. But uh, I'm not uh, a great peat freak. Uh, the uh, this whiskey just floats my boat. This brilliance, I really like this it. This is this is beautiful, Jock, and it it surprises me that you don't like peat. I mean, being a Scotsman and. Uh, Surprises me a lot that you don't like peat. No, I do like it. I I didn't say, I, I'm, I'm just not such a great peat head as some Scots people are. Yeah, but I, I would, I would say you'd, you'd, you'd probably go for the big, full strength, smoke, um, smoky whiskies, licking the ashtray sort of whiskies. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I do, but but just not often. When I'm when I'm sitting in a and I want to get my nose right into something, the, yeah. the problem with peat is that it. Uh, it's such a dominant element within mm -hmm. whiskey that it just takes over all the other things and uh, yeah. you have to really get your nose into it and get, it gets all complicated before you can uh, get all the other elements out of it. And this one, it just speaks for itself. It's nice and, Absolutely. and fresh. Absolutely. And, okay, uh, we'll pour, we'll pour the, uh, well, I'll put it to the side because we'll try something peated mm -hmm. anyway. So, um, you know, put that there, and we'll go for the edited, the one uh, that you just took out of the tube. Yeah, it's and, um, the second whiskey in our core range, uh, that's called edited. Uh, we don't call it peated, because it's not heavily peated, it's a very mild peat, and um, just now you were saying how, how peat can overtake all the flavours in, in, in a whiskey. Yeah. Um, now, Paul John whiskey uh, believes in keeping that balance of peat and flavours at all times and we're not here to scare people we're not here to give that full smokiness to, to put people off it's, yeah. it's basically a whiskey with big flavours yeah and we want to complement the smoke yeah now you've got scotch whiskies from uh, the island of isla or or even some highland uh, peated malts and mm -hmm. from some of the other islands too where uh, the peat is just like the embers of wood under a barbecue, and mm -hmm. it, uh, it and uh, in a blind tasting, my wife and I, we went to the Isla Festival a few times, and on the Wednesday on Port Ellen, there's a a blind tasting of um, Isla whiskies, and hardly anybody can differentiate them when you do it blind. Of course, yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. even people like myself that have been busy with whiskey for years and years and years, mm -hmm. just, uh, it was in the glasses, but they were blue, you could you could sniff it, but you couldn't see it. Yeah, and yeah. You just couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, was it a Kalila? Was it a Lagavulin? Was it, you know, and, and connoisseurs, people that write about whiskey were not been able to tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, here we have a, a peated whiskey, ladies and gentlemen, which uh, has been, had the gigantic angel share, which, which India has. Tell us a little bit about that angel share, Rikrish. Well, um, Scottish angel share is around, averaging one, one to three percent, uh, which, which, which is very, very, Scots are very lucky people. And uh, yeah, we, we have we grudge the angels. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want them to have it. We have an angel share of uh, twelve to sixteen percent, which is is a uh, direct to call it angel share. It's more like a devil share, isn't it? It's just you. You just put the whiskey in a cask, and it's gone in yeah. four years' time. What do you call angels in India? What do you call these people? These 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 <laughs> beings. I mean, the, Christianity is our is our thing. What do you call? Such beings there. Angels, angels. Uh, there is a word in Hindi. They they say farishte. Farishte. Okay. Farishte means uh, means angels basically. Okay. 
But so they exist in Hinduism? Oh yeah, of course, of course. There's angels and devils in, in, in all parts of the world and everywhere, in all cultures. Uh, yeah, so going back to angel share, 12 to 16 percent, a lot of whiskey just goes up in the air. Um, we, we, we can't mature it for no more than say five, six years. We've tried maturing whiskies for longer times, but but we don't have anything left in a in a cask. But uh, lots of other technical re reasons which you'd be aware of. Uh, we need we, we have to stop maturing the whiskey around four and a half five years time. Okay. So we get the right color, right whiskey, like right uh, flavors uh, to the liquid. Um, now I would like to talk a little bit about this, Peter. Um, mm -hmm. Folks, you remember I just said, uh, I'm not a great peat head. It, it, it actually, I go through phases. Sometimes I am. Just at the moment, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And um, But this is a peated whiskey which is very mild. It's mildly peated. And because of that great angel share that Chris was just talking of, you have a gigantic influence between the spirit and the wood. Mm -hmm. You also have in, in Goa, where it's <coughs> from, um, this, uh, this huge uh, amount of moisture in the air from the ocean, which is uh, affecting the casks as well. In, and I must say, in a very positive way, it's, uh, this one is, as I said, the last one's a little bit of a honeycomb, it's got uh, vanilla, it's got uh, vanolins, it's, it's uh, sweet fresh and this one is peat but not that um that uh, you know these embers in your face it's just a it's just delicate very delicate very and very then there's this freshness and sweetness mm. that it joins onto at the end mint chocolate chip jock do you get that that's several people say mint chocolate chip mm, maybe not quite that but is it not there's a little bit of uh, something in the what the dutch people call salmiac which is Family of licorice. Oh yeah, it's, licorice, um, yeah. And of you course. know, I'll put a, a little bit of water in it because I think, you know, we've got these wee geeky pipettes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. John. And so, just about three or four drops in, and uh, swirl it around. I actually, hurt my nose. <laughs> 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 Glass up to it there. So enthusiastic about it. Oh great! It's a smasher. Mm. It's a. There is there is a, a lot of difference between brilliance and edited. Brilliance is your, easy drinking, good flavors, um, lots of good vanilla, honey honeycomb flavors yeah. coming through, and then, all of a sudden you add this tiny bit of peat, yeah. to this, whiskey, and it becomes becomes different ball game altogether. Yeah. yeah, obviously you're not adding peat to the whiskey, but, but of course, yeah. Chris is saying, uh, people watching this channel know that you don't put peat inside of whiskey. Of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's made from peated barley. Peated barley, yeah. But, um, mm, yummy. Uh, mm. Now, my personal favorite, uh, there are two other ones. These two here, folks, these two here, these are select casks. No, this is my favourite. Um, it's not Chris's, but it's mine. It doesn't matter. Well, we're all <laughs> the, uh, This one is called the classic uh, select cask. It's in a, a green bottle. Stands well on your wall. Uh, don't let it accidentally fall. Uh, right. Um, We'll get into these first. We'll do that in a minute. Yep. Do the, do yeah. the, the, there's a peated cask. I'm just is, eager to get into this, Jock. Yeah, it's, he it's heavier than, yeah. than, uh, than, the, than the, uh, the edited. Now, we'll pour two of these. Oh, look at that colour, Jock. Yeah, now you're talking, eh? Look at that this colour. Is eh? a, I'll walk up to the camera with it yeah. and let them see the it. The richness, the colour, absolutely superb. Yeah. Now... Chris and I have had, a, I'll walk up to the camera so that you can actually see the colour through the bottle. Yeah, there you go. Look at that golden colour. The, uh, no colour added, but the gigantic angel shape. 
of this. Oh, and look at the smell is coming right out at you. There's, you get sometimes whiskies where you have to coax the smell out because mm -hmm. um, you're, um, you have to put water in and coax it out and wait for a while, warm the glass and breathe into it and do all sorts of funny stuff. But um, not this boy. This baby is jumping straight out at its Uncle Jock because uh, <laughs> it knows that Uncle Jock loves it. It's uh, it's it's vanilla. It's uh, it's rich, Jock. It's really rich. Um, and I, I I know I know understand why you love this so much. It's it's your kind of uh, whiskey, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's my favorite. It's your 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 kind. I can a, see your name written all over it. It's yeah. a hog's head. Uh, uh, American first fill bourbon casks, all whiskies matured between four and a half to five years, and uh, we are we use six row barley, which comes from northern India. Uh, it comes from the foothills of Himalayas. We use six row barley come versus the two row barley. Six row barley is high, and in, in, it's pretty rich, and that shows on the whiskey itself. It's pretty good. In terms what, what of colour, rich. Tell me about what, what. What do you mean by rich? Well, from from what I know, it's uh, six row barley is high in protein and low in starch. Is that right? That's right, isn't it? And okay, and, okay. and uh, so the two row barley is high in starch and low in protein. So uh, the the thickness, the texture of the whiskey itself, you do you can actually chew on the whiskey. Yeah. Um, it's not one of those whiskies which which literally it's. It, what I'm trying to say is it's very rich and chewy whiskey. Yeah, I'm just trying to show it to the camera so that they can see the tears of it coming out. It's yeah, very, very loads thick. Loads of them, loads of them. Really Absolutely thick loads of them. and oily whiskey. It's very oily, yes. Indeed, yeah. almost chewable. Yeah. Mm. You know, Chris and I, have, have, we, he's, Chris has spent the weekend at my house here and we've had a good crack together. We've been to a couple of shows and uh, we've had a good laugh as well. You know, the thing is, you know, whiskey brings people together and the... Uh, I kind of adopted him this weekend, you know, the, uh, we, um, we, we, yeah, so, yeah, we have a cameraman behind the camera who's telling us, uh, with, with sign language what to do, and it's kind of hard, and the camera's saying, I should look at you, you know, but of course, yeah, I've always yeah. learned to look at the camera, so, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've adopted this lad, you know, he's my boy now, so, um, uh, and, and on top of that, he brings me nice whiskey. He's Uncle Jock. He brings me nice whiskey. So here we go with it. My favourite, the ca the classic cask, select classic cask. My absolute favourite of the range up till now. And for the people in Holland watching the blog, uh, there's a bit of a surprise because in the course of this year, there's going to be two uh, specially bottled uh, single casks, which. Uh, I've had the great privilege of being part of uh, selecting them and specially selected for the Netherlands and um, one of them's kind of like this but then it's on steroids I mean this <laughs> is this is uh, this is a big 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 whiskey this one but it's uh, the, the other one that, that we've selected is, is that on steroids mm. and then we've got another peated cask uh, which we're going to talk about now mm. I oh, couldn't agree more, Jock. Um, the, the single casks are going to be very, very special indeed. Uh, what makes it special is that uh, it's been carefully crafted, carefully selected by Uncle Jock here. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's very limited. Um, as Jock was saying earlier on, the Angel's share is really high, so we don't get a lot of whiskey, a lot of bottles of whiskeys from one cask, pushing it 180 bottles to 200 bottles per cask. Uh, in your case, I think you're probably going to end up getting 180 um, bottles out of that cast. So watch oh, out for that space, all the Dutch fans. Uh, watch out for the space, and as soon as it comes out, make sure you get your hands on a bottle because once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. Um, now here we go, folks. This is a peated cask, so uh, it's at cask strength, uh, which in this case is 55.5 yep. percent peated. And um, you remember I said again, you know, peated is, uh, uh, yeah, it kind of bugs me sometimes, but at the moment, 
I can get right into the mood for this because it's got such a sweet aftertaste. Of course, yeah. You know they. Oh yeah, and, and the peat comes out. Look, for the lack of villain fans and the uh, the fans of Kalila and uh, the Isla folk and. Maybe I shouldn't name other names, but anyway, uh, people that like heavily peated whiskey, uh, it's not the same. It's um, this is quite heavy. This, this this is really qu quite heavy on the peat. Somebody said today at one of the shows it reminded them of another Isla whiskey, which again I won't name. I, sh I shouldn't have named names just now, but the uh, again it's very very oily and. It's very round, although it's it's uh, it's peated and quite heavily peated too. It's definitely not overpowering, and it's got that. You can you can smell the barbecue a little bit. Yeah. What was that um, comment earlier on, Jock? Um, somebody said they that reminded them of uh, a hot summer's day, dry grass, and all of a sudden the heavens open. And the yeah. smell of oh, nice, that's right. that's what he said. Yeah. fresh soil, yeah. red soil, that's what they're saying. And perhaps ever since that person said that, I think that's just uh, the smell of this whiskey just reminds me yeah. of that scene where, where there's hot summer's day barbecue alongside and there's dry grass and heaven's just open. And all of a sudden you smell, you the, smell the earth, nature, yeah. earth. It's just beautiful. And again, as as uh, we we agreed earlier on, it's not all about smoke, smoke, smoke in this whiskey. It's it's a perfect balance of the big flavors which the classic gives. Yeah. But then you just put the peat as well. Yeah. Today, yeah. folks, we were in a, 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 a in Germany. We were in a uh, in an agricultural area. There were lots of farming people there, and uh, there was um, someone who said it's like plowing the earth, you know, and and. Uh, then it rains and you know you you can actually smell mother earth the earth mm -hmm. and uh, that's what it's just like yeah, i suppose people when they taste their favorite whiskey when they taste a very, very good whiskey they relate the tastes the the notes of the whiskey to what they've experienced in the past or what they experience in daily life i mean mm -hmm. i had I had various different people comparing their tastes and smell with various different things that happens to them. I mean, somebody was a gardener the other day and he said, I could smell lavender. Mm, and like I, this? Yeah, yeah they, they were saying, yeah, it's fresh lavender when it, when the season just starts and lavender is just about, uh, about to open up the freshness of the nature. Okay. So I think what the person was trying to explain was it's, it's natural, it's close to earth, it's earthy and it's fresh. And that's yes. what that reminds them of. Yeah. And there was a there was a young girl in in the whiskey festival this this um, afternoon, and they were saying that the young girl said it reminds me of nice warm cuddles from my mum. <laughs> so it's it's just a goodness. It's the, the minute it just touches your lips, it's just that good feeling. It's just that nice earthy feeling. Yeah. And today we were in Germany, and and somebody made a remark, which. Uh, it, it, it doesn't irritate me anymore because I've, I've began to understand where it comes from. Just a, 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 an un-understanding. Uh, and what happened is that the uh, the guy said, I said to him, would you like to try some Indian whiskey? And he said, uh, no. <laughs> no. And I said, well, why not? He said, I don't like it. I said, oh, oh well, in that case, sorry that I offered it. When did you try it? <coughs> he said, I've never tried it. <laughs> I said, how do you know? How do you know you don't like it? And he said, uh, oh, no, no, I, I'm a Scotch drinker. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm from Scotland. And uh, this whiskey will blow you away. He said, I don't believe it. Well, to have some. <laughs> and then we gave him some and he went and told his friends and they all came and drank. <laughs> they liked it. So... You know, folks, this is Indian. This is India. Wow. You know, we uh, the British um, and uh, and India have got uh, a great, great uh, thing together. You know, uh, not all of it positive. Yeah, let's of course, be honest. of course, of course, yeah. Uh, Britain does. Uh, 
we won't get into that. It's about whiskey. It's not about politics. But um, I come from the town of Paisley, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Paisley has got a pattern called the Paisley pattern. It's world famous. It's worn in America. It's worn in Canada, Australia. Wherever you go in the world, you can buy shawls called the Paisley pattern. It's actually Indian. You know, it's from India. Yeah. The uh, so it's an Indian woven material, and you know, try some of this, Paul John. It will blow your mind away. It's I couldn't. I couldn't agree more, Jock. I think uh, anybody who is who is looking for a good experience, I think they have to try Paul John range. Um, the first two core ranges for somebody who doesn't who don't want to get involved with the cast strength, but if somebody wants to get the full flavors, I think they have to go for the yeah. car cast strength. And I couldn't agree more. I think. We, we are not here to compete or challenge anyone, but we are here to provide you all ladies and gentlemen, this is just just try and experience just it's just wonderful whiskies. Yeah, who knows, maybe some miniatures around. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. forgotten that you've told me already. J Ho. J Ho. J Ho. J Ho. J Ho, gentlemen. And ladies. J Ho, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>